when we talk about why we need to protect cultural heritage, we again remember the criteria that make cultural heritage important. Memory, identity, economy, tourism, different perceptions, the monetary value, theft, looting, and this protection pyramid, which gives equal importance to every cultural heritage item, be it protected or be UNESCO World Heritage and everything in between. When we think about threats to cultural heritage that can become risks to cultural heritage, we are immediately directly into the topic of why we need to protect cultural heritage and natural heritage as well, of course. Threats can be on a daily basis from neglect, lack of money, followed by catastrophes caused by natural events, very often linked to climate change, climate change induced events in the 21st century, but also terrorism and armed conflict. And the latter three very much also affect human beings. It's always something we have to keep in mind when we talk about cultural heritage being affected by calamitous events. There are always human beings affected as well. And when we're talking about protection of cultural heritage, we should also think about the disaster management cycle. And we have the incident, we have a response phase, we have a recovery phase, a mitigation phase, and a preparedness phase. And for us at the Center of Cultural Property Protection in Krems, the preparedness phase is maybe the most important. Because everything you prepare, you think about upfront, before an emergency happens, before you need it, is very likely to function somehow during a disastrous event, a calamitous event, a catastrophic situation in which there's a lot of stress and it will not work to build something up from scratch in this stressful event. Preparedness can be you participating in this training, education, getting to know the idea of cultural heritage protection. We usually cap every preparedness measure off with a exercise together with those who might help and assist in cultural heritage protection if necessary. With that, we have a certain number of lessons identified, lessons learned, and that actually brings this emergency disaster management cycle to always a higher level, doing exercises and learning from something that has been tried. There might be trial and error in that, of course, but also learning from um, other people who have experienced disastrous events for their cultural heritage. Because the idea of the disaster management circle is not that you stupidly start always again at the very beginning of the circle, but that everything that happens, be it a real life incident or an exercise, preparation exercise, brings your preparation to a higher sphere so that you're always better prepared with each iteration of this disaster management circle. So why then do we protect and prepare for protection of cultural heritage? There are a lot of threats out there. General security management can be on fire, flood, theft, vandalism, accidents and malfunctions, deterioration, wear and tear, climate, light, pests and mold, pollutants, severe weather conditions, earthquakes, violence, terrorism and armed conflict. And I've selected a few pictures to give you an idea of what we are talking about here, large-scale events. The fire in the Anormalia Library in Weimar in Germany in 2004. In 2018, it was the National Museum of Brazil that was on fire. A year later, the Cathedral of Notre Dame in France, in Paris. Here we have the Dresden flood, Germany, 2002. We have the cultural hotspot of Dresden underwater. Again in Germany, 2021, the Arweiler flood. There have been numerous earthquakes only recently, Turkey, Morocco, Nepal. Here on the screen, you see the earthquakes in Italy, 2016. And the pictures have been supplied by the Comando Carabinieri Tutela Patrimonio Culturale, the unit and branch of the Italian Carabinieri tasked with the protection of cultural heritage. And here you see them recovering altar pieces and statues out of collapsed churches. But in the 21st century, we've also seen wanton destruction of cultural heritage. In Mali, for example, World Heritage, UNESCO World Heritage was targeted because it was UNESCO World Heritage. So it was like, as we said in this comic, when I hear the word culture, I reach for my pick and destroy it because it is culture. 
Yeah, this picture, we see the destruction in Palmyra from the so-called Islamic State. Also world heritage, Temple of Baal blown to bits and pieces. And again, in the 21st century, we also have armed conflict, peer-to-peer -peer conflict, near-peer-to-peer -peer conflicts. And they also damage and threaten cultural heritage. And for armed conflict, we have to say that there is, in addition to everything else, The 1954 Hague Convention for the Protection of Cultural Property During Armed Conflict, which specifies what the military has to do when it comes to cultural property protection during armed conflict. Another very important issue and topic is illicit excavations, illicit trade, theft of cultural heritage. And for that topic, ICOM has prepared the so-called red lists. ICOM is the International Council of Museums. And here on the screen now, you see um, the red list for Syrian cultural objects at risk, representing types of cultural heritage that is most likely to be illicitly um, traded out of the country. And if you check online, there are several of those red lists for different countries that are at risk regarding their cultural heritage and illicit trade. What we do have to keep in mind that with this selection, you once again have on the screen now, threats to cultural heritage. Yes, we know that they happen in crisis areas. The more unstable a situation is, the more likely it is the cultural heritage somehow gets damaged. But nevertheless, it doesn't need a crisis area to have threats for cultural heritage, risk for cultural heritage. Cultural heritage is at risk all around the world. And that's why it is so important that we accept that, we know that, and we prepare for its protection. And this is what we're aiming at with this online program. And you will have a lot of input regarding your possible measures for protecting the cultural heritage put in your charge.